Hello, so in this video, I continue our discussion on counting. So let's start by looking uh, at the problem here. So here's the problem. How many distinct sequences can we make using three letter A's and four letter B's? So I could have A, 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 B, 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 or A, B, A, A, B, 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 B. As you see in any of these, there are uh, three A's and four B's. So uh, the length of the sequence is always seven, and there are three A's and four B's. The question is, how many distinct sequences can I make using these? Well, it looks like there are seven places, seven positions, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to fill them with A's and B's. For example, I might choose the position of A's to be here, and then, the rest I fill them with B's, right? So here I got the sequence A, B, A, B, A, B, B. Okay? So in general, I can uh, say that my question is this. I have seven spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need to choose three of them for A's. So let's say A, A, this is just one choice, choosing three for A's, and whatever is left is going to be B's. So the number of ways uh, to do that is seven choose three. That is the answer to the question. I have uh, seven spots, I need to choose three of them. And equivalently, you can choose uh, the places for B's. So you, you choose four places for B's, and then the rest is going to be A's. And we can ask the, a more general question. How about if I have M A's and I have N B's? Well, the same idea. You have M plus N spots and you need to choose M of them for A's. Or you can choose N of them for B's. So this is the answer to this question. And as we have seen before, this is M plus N factorial divided by M uh, plus n minus n, which is n factorial, and then n factorial. So we will uh, come back to this problem, uh, but now I want to continue our discussion that we have uh, had on sampling. If you remember, we said that when we are sampling from a set, which means that we are choosing elements from the set, there are uh, actually four possibilities. So when we are sampling, the sampling could be either ordered or unordered uh, and also it could be with without repetition sorry without replacement or it could be with replacement the same thing without replacement or with replacement now, so far we have discussed three cases, this case, this case, and this case in previous videos. And now we want to talk about the last one, which is unordered sampling with replacement. So we want to talk about unordered sampling with replacement. What it means is that I have a set, I want to choose, let's say I have a set with n elements, set A that has n elements, and I want to choose k samples and i want to do that in a way that first of all ordering does not matter i don't care which element i choose first which element i choose uh, second and so on and the sampling is with the replacement okay so let's look at a simple uh, case let a be one two three and let's assume k equals to two so here n is equal to three a has three elements i want to choose two of them so ordering doesn't matter, but I can repeat elements. So let's say, what are the possibilities? It could be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. How about 2, 1? Well, 2, 1, it does not count here because we already have 1, 2, and ordering does not matter. So 2, 1, uh, we have already counted. So 2, 2, 2, 3. How about 3? Well, 3, 1, we already have it. 1, 3 here. 3, 2, we already have it. 2, 3, so it's just 3 and 3. So the total number of possibilities here is 6 for this case, if n equals 3 and k equals 2. 
Before moving to, to the more general case of N and K, I want to make an observation here. Note that because the sampling is unordered here, all I care is that how many 1s do I have, how many 2s do I have, and how many 3s do I have. If I tell you the number of 1s and number of 2s and number of 3s in my sample, then basically I have given you my sample. For example, here my sample is just, there are two 1s and there is no uh, 2 and there is no 3. So in this one, I have 1, 1, I have 1, 2, and again, 0, 3. So I can do this. Let's let define x1 to be the number of the number of ones in my sample. And let's define x2 to be the number of x uh, number of twos in my sample and x3 to be the number of threes in my sample. If I tell you x1 x2 x3, I have given you my sample. And vice versa. If I give you, for example, if I tell you my sample was 2, 3, you would say that, well, x1 is 0 because there is no 1. x2 is equal to 1. And x3 is equal to 1. So there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between, you know, x1, x2, and x3 and the sample that I have chosen. And note that there is uh, the constraint that we have here, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is the size of my sample, right? The number of ones, the number of twos, the number of threes is always equal to k, which is in this case is equal to two. But, uh, x1 and x2 and x3 are, are non-negative integers, right? So they must be zero, one, and so on. In this case, they cannot be larger than two, but in general, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, always, uh, there are always non-negative integers. So I have an observation here. What I'm claiming here is that the number of solutions to this equation, such that x1, x2, x3 are non-negative integers, is equal to the number of samples that I can have uh, when I have uh, unordered sampling with replacement. So if I have a set A, let's say it has n elements, and I want to choose k samples, right? I want to sample k times. Uh, in a way that uh, you know ordering does not matter and it's with replacement which means that repetition is allowed then uh, the number of those samples is equal to the number of solutions to the equation x1 plus x2 x up plus x3 up to xn is equal to k where x1 x2 and so on are all uh, non-negative integers Of course, they cannot be larger than k, so I can say that 1, 2, 3, up to k. So here is the conclusion that we have. This is the little lemma that we have. The total number of distinct k samples from an ele n element set such that repetition is allowed, which means that it's with replacement, and ordering does not matter, is the same as the number of distinct solution to this equation here, x1 plus x2 plus xn is equal to k, where xi's are non-negative numbers. And as I said, you can say x1 shows the number of 1s, x2 shows the number of 2s, and so on. So how do I know how many solutions does this equation have? Well, let's look at a simple scenario. Let's say, you know, we are looking for the equation x1 plus x2 plus x. 3 plus x4 uh, plus x5, let's say there is 5 of them, is equal to 8. And let's come up with the solution. Let's say x1 is equal to 2, then x2 is equal to 3, x3, let's say, is 0, x4 is equal to 1, and then x5 must be, uh, I believe, 2. Yeah, this is equal to 8, right? So, now, if I have a solution, this is, of course, a solution to this equation and xi's are you know non-negative integers this is a valid solution now what i want to do i want to kind of convert this problem to a problem that i can understand uh, and here's a trick what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at each x and i'm going to replace it with a, a, a code with a code that i have for them here's my code if i have two i replace it with two ones right Plus, if I have a 3, I replace it with 3 1s. Well, this is 0, so I put no 1s here. 
one is just there is only one one and then two is equal to two ones right so this is three this is zero this is one and this is two and of course this is equal to eight right if I read this as a two read this as a three read this as zero one and two then I have eight now if you think about this this is very interesting so I am saying that I am making sequences using ones and pluses right how many ones do I have well I must have eight because the, the x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 is equal to eight so I have eight ones and I have how many pluses do I have one two three four this four in fact is five minus one right the number of x's minus one one two three four I have four pluses so I want to make a sequence using eight ones and four pluses now for any sequence that you give me I can give you what the values of xi's are and if you give me the values of xi's I can make those sequences so so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence so the number of solutions to these equations in fact to this equation is equal to the number of sequences that I can make using eight ones and four pluses but I know what that number is if you remember from the beginning you know in the beginning of this video we talked about this maybe I replace ones by A's and pluses with B's how many sequences can I make using eight A's and four B's correct I have 12 positions and I want to choose eight of them to uh, for A's so or equivalently I can say I can choose four of them so we are done we know how many solutions does this equation have and in general if I ask you what is the number of solutions to the equation x1 plus x2 up to xn is equal to k where xi's are basically positive integers right the number of solutions to this equation is equal to well I, I have okay how many ones do I have n minus one I have n minus one pluses right I have k ones so the number of solutions is equal to n plus k minus one choose k which is the same as n plus k minus one choose n minus one so uh, it's, it's just the exact same argument as here we just had a specific example here we have repeat our argument for n and k so this is the number of solutions to these equations which is in fact the answer to our original question our original question was if I have unordered sampling with replacement I have a set with n elements and I want to choose k samples such that ordering does not matter and the sampling is with replacement so the uh, basically repetition is allowed so the number of ways I can choose uh, these samples is basically n plus k minus 1 choose k which is the same as n plus k minus 1 choose n minus 1 okay thank you